Hi, this is Paul Hitchcock. I am the founder and president of Giant Jacks Media. And thank you for jumping on this episode of Giant TV. And for those of you who have never been here before, this is my channel where I just want to provide tons of value for all of us that are building a business, our practice, whatever it, whatever it is we're doing. And I'm focused on sales, marketing, branding, all the tools and technology that go along with building. And I'm very passionate about it, building out multiple businesses myself and really excited about uh, this event today. Uh, and I want to give you a little background because uh, obviously in the title, there's a focus on Vistage chairs, Vistage being the world's largest CEO peer to peer advisory group, incredible organization. And uh, there are Vistage chairs uh, across the world who are building up groups of CEOs and C-suite executives and doing a great job of facilitating uh, the coming together of those people and growing businesses and, and, uh, and much more. Uh, and my experience with Vistage is I founded my media company nine years ago and my uh, first client was a law firm in Southern California Barth Calderon, asset protection, estate planning, business planning. And they, uh, at the firm, tons of Vistage members, top Vistage speakers, uh, and um, eventually a uh, sponsor of the executive summits that Vistage puts on. And so I took over the Vistage relationship for Barth Calderon many years ago and became intimately integrated with Vistage on many different levels uh in in our relationship traveled around the country for the executive summits and so uh, i just have a very deep understanding of vistage and uh of, of the challenges of building a group and the opportunities that vistage chairs have and this this episode here isn't just for vistage chairs but because i'm working on some projects right now for some chairs i wanted to share this and pass along that information so uh, we're going to jump into this and uh, let's get started. Okay, gotta love that dancing. Anything for the kids, as I always say. Uh, all right, so uh, what I'm focused on with my media company, and this is important because I'm gonna touch on pieces of this as I go through right now and show you uh, how uh, I'm partnered with a chair and, and we're engaging with, uh, with his top prospects. And so these are the five foundational elements that every single business needs in place. I don't care if it's a solopreneur, a Vistage chair, a bigger business. These are the elements that I'm focused on. And the reason I get so passionate is because I see that many, many uh, businesses and individuals don't, don't have this. So take note of that and let's jump in here. So my feeling about selling and marketing is that uh, we all have to continuously sell and market and brand our businesses. And obviously, we know big companies like Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, you know, Facebook, all these companies, they're constantly selling, marketing, branding. Why would it be any different for a solopreneur or a smaller business? It wouldn't. And so it's just something that all of us have to embrace no matter what level we're involved with. And the reason that I work with a lot of coaches and, and Vistage chairs is because, as, as you know, if you're a coach, the coaching world has exploded in recent years. It seems like everybody is calling themselves a coach or a consultant. You know, 13-year-old kids who have done nothing are, you know, I'm a consultant, I'm a consultant. And it's just become an extremely competitive environment. And, uh, you know, the CEOs and executives that all coaches would like to work with and consultants, including myself, it's really hard to get the attention of those people 
so many of us are vying to get in there and, and get in front of them. And the problem is too many coaches, most, and this includes Vistage chairs, look the same, especially on platforms like LinkedIn and other places is they're, you know, on, on the outside, the way they're showing up, they're not differentiating themselves and too few people are standing out and being the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. And it's counterintuitive to what we all know we need to be doing with, with our businesses, especially in a competitive environment, is standing out and making a lot of noise. And so this is about today, making a lot of noise, showing up, getting in front of top prospects, saturating the market, getting top prospects into your ecosystem of touch points. But I just see, I see this in examples for Vistage shares. I see, uh, you know, it's interesting because I should say that Vistage shares are very, very unique. And all of them have been successful in their own right. And now they're, they're becoming a Vistage chair. So they're behind the scenes and their work history, very unique, incredible people. Yet when they're taking themselves out to the public and having eyeballs on them and their stuff, there is no, there is no separators there with the content being shared with, you know, the, the, the branding, personal brand and all of that. So it just doesn't make any sense. Okay. So let's get in step-by-step step to the engagement process here uh, that I want to talk about that I have going on right now with many people. And as we get into this step, number one, before we start executing on the outreach is an elevated personal brand. And I don't want to minimize this at all because it's really, really important to have a personal brand. There's a huge opportunity for all of us to brand ourselves and to embrace the tools that allow us to do that. And your personal brand is really the seed lane that grows the rest of your marketing. And what we're talking about here today involves a lot of marketing. And so what is your personal brand? Well, many things. I put some of the top ones here. It's the colors, the fonts, the messaging that represent you. These things really matter. You know, your value proposition, what you're telling people, your story. You know, are you telling stories? It's your certainly your profile on LinkedIn. We all know LinkedIn is the largest you know, networking event on the planet and a lot of visibility there. People are looking at you. And the reason your brand is so important two broad brushstrokes. One is clients and prospects are checking you out and making value judgments about you. They're deciding, should I get on a phone call? Should I attend this person's event? Should I you know, certainly buy their product or service? And so I want to control that story. I don't want people to not know what I do or to, to make judgments about me that are incorrect. I want to tell a story. I just want to be in charge of that. And so it matters with your clients and prospects, certainly for Vistage chairs, as you're trying to make an impression on CEOs and executives, you know, for your key groups and, and uh, your CE groups, you know, you, you just want to be different from every other coach that they've been, uh, they've been, you know, uh, uh, getting hit up, hit up on, you know, from, and you know, what's happening. So uh, the profile is important for your outward audience. And it's certainly important on the LinkedIn platform. If we all believe in LinkedIn and LinkedIn's great when we do, then LinkedIn is watching you and they're scoring you. It's called your social selling index, one to 100. One, you stink, 100, you're great. And there's four quadrants they're looking at. And it matters because if you have a low score, LinkedIn is making you irrelevant on the platform. They're pushing you down. They're not gonna show your content. And they did a study on this. LinkedIn did a study to create the social selling index with the top marketing people on that platform. So um, I'm not going to go into all the details about what LinkedIn is looking at, but it matters on the platform. If you're going to be there and use it, then you've got to stand out and use the tools that LinkedIn wants you to use to elevate your personal brand on that site. So one get your brand elevated and make sure it's airtight. 
Okay, now let's get into uh, phase two here is obviously when you're engaging and you want to reach out and get in front of the right people, you've got to curate a list of your prospects. And this is where it all begins. You know, your efforts are only as good as your list you put together. I remember starting out in the business, I was building teams for big Wall Street firms in San Francisco, and it was, um, you know, pre-internet back then. And it was like, okay, you got to curate your list, library, alumni directories, you know, and there were people who came around and sold lists, index cards, the Glen Gary leads, they'd sell them to the, the branch offices and you pay money for these things. And so it was always about curating lists. Today, obviously, there's new tools to do that that are, you know, well beyond that scenario I just described. Here's how we do it. So we go into Sales Navigator, and that's a, uh, a LinkedIn tool. It is a premium service. If you don't have it, uh, it is a different interface, toggle back and forth between LinkedIn and Sales Navigator. And LinkedIn wants you to have Sales Navigator for many reasons. It costs you know about 79 bucks a month, but um, there's some great search parameters on there to get to your targeted uh, list of people. And there's about 34 filter points and through the use of keywords and some tactical expert search strategies on LinkedIn, you get pretty niche on there. And of course, if you're a Vistage chair, you know you're you know you're uh, looking at the geography. You know you, you're not going all over the the country or the world. You got a very specific geography uh, because people are driving to meetings and and so forth. So. Um, Obviously, geography counts, and uh, you can get you can do a pretty good job on niching down on Sales Navigator. So, so you have uh, you have that that uh, list you curate, and then uh, the way we're doing it is we also are developing an outside list because Sales Navigator is pretty good. It's not perfect, and we want to get these lists very very tight, and so. Um, what we do then is, uh, you know, uh, through through my team, we have a, a curation of an outside list with very strict parameters that the Vistage chairs are looking for for their group. Obviously, by company size, revenue, industry group, and so forth. And so now we have a sales navigator list, which is in LinkedIn. Now we've got an outside list. And uh, now we take these lists and we give them to Vistage to filter. Uh, I understand completely uh, the uh, you know how Vistage works with their lead list, and we don't want to step on anybody's toes. And you know, so we're going in and you know looking at Salesforce and and you know having Vistage take our lead list and filter and say, okay, let's let's take out anybody that we shouldn't be contacting. So now we do that. We got a clean list. Okay, so what we do then is uh, we add our our list uh, to a Sales Navigator lead list. So the list that we curated in Sales Navigator, and you know our team goes in and we we make sure that list is cleaned up too. You know once Vistage looks at it, but we we go in there so we clean up that search list in Navigator. Now we add that list to a lead list in Navigator. A lead list is very different from a search list in Navigator. A lead list, the reason you want to add people to a lead list is because when you do that, Sales Navigator starts feeding you information on uh, on anyone that's a lead. It, it's not true of a search list. It's got to be a lead list. And you can put first, second, third level connections as leads, but you'll start to see the content they're sharing, if they're moving jobs, if they're announcing things at their company, and this gets into the engagement I'm gonna talk about. So you, so we add it to a lead list. Then we take our outside list and we go in and we find those people in LinkedIn and uh, we add those to the same lead list. So remember, that's an outside list and we're cross-referencing and, and uh, with the search list and navigator. So now we have this list that's been cleaned up from the outside list the sales navigator search list, it's all into a lead list. 
in Navigator. So that's that's one area where we organize the list. The other area is we add it to our email platform. So I'm going to talk about this because email nurture is a big thing. And our outside list, we have email addresses. So we're adding it to our email distribution platform. We love constant contact. And we've got to do it the right way. You've got to be judicious about that, have a welcome email. There's a whole process about doing that right. But you add it to your email a nurture campaign. And uh, that's another area where all of these filtered leads go to. Now you also, for reasons of outreach and lead generation, you got to put them somewhere, organize them off the LinkedIn platform. We have a proprietary dashboard. So we're taking this lead list here. So remember, we have this, this list, cleaned up list. We're uploading it to our dashboard. Maybe you have a CRM or I don't know what you're doing, but uh, we have our dashboard. So this is how we're organizing that airtight top level prospect list. Okay, now the awareness begins. And I'll mention the sales funnel at this point because this, this all ties into big picture sales funnel. And we all know sales funnel, the different steps. The top of the funnel is awareness. People don't know who you are. They need to know who you are. For Vistage chairs, we want to saturate the geography. Everybody in that area needs to know who you are and just be aware that you're the person. So the awareness top of the funnel. Then obviously you're generating interest, calls to action to get on a phone or a Zoom, et cetera, et cetera. So this is where the awareness begins. Okay. Here's what we do with the with our dashboard, the outreach uh, to grow your community. All of these filtered prospects are in the dashboard, or in this case, in your CRM, whatever you're doing. And then uh, we are reaching out here to second and third level connections and we're doing it in an automated and scaled fashion and we are connecting with them and through a series of messages that come from you highly personalized conversational we are reaching out to build up the audience and to connect with uh, these people and to get into a conversation. And, um, and, and the whole reason you want to connect with more and more people and build up your LinkedIn community, great things happen when you do that. Of course, connecting with the right people. Uh, but when you're, the more people you're connected to, the more noise you can make. When you're putting out content, the more noise around your content, you can direct message your first level connections. You can invite first level connections to events. I'm going to talk about here in a minute. You can do just a lot of highly, you know, engaged activities with first level connections. So you want to just grow that bigger and bigger. So this is the outreach here, and it all contains dashboard, uh, and you're interacting and so forth. For the first level connections, because now you have maybe you, I, I don't know, but you have existing first level connections that are good prospects. We're also moving those into the dashboard and you're already connected. And now we can run nurture campaigns, which are direct message campaigns because you're connected to them on high level content and events and stuff you're doing, which again, I'm going to get to here in, in, in a second. So now you have these simultaneous outreaches going on connecting the second and third levels, getting into conversations there, nurturing your first level connections with a, with a separate campaign, with a message, and that is tailored to whatever we wanna nurture them with, but it's providing value, teaching, maybe inviting to events and so forth. So you have these going on, and this is lead generation. This is how I run lead generation. And for me, it's about a professional interaction it's about embracing the tools that can help us do this, especially for solopreneurs like Vistage coaches who can't do it all. So this is the lead generation part. And this is selling, of course. Okay, step five then is email nurture. So remember now we've taken the emails from our list and we have them in constant contact 
And now you're going to be nurturing these top level prospects. And along the way, through all these processes, we're gathering more emails as you're coming into contact with people. So you got to have a process for doing that. Email nurture is really important because 90% plus of the people that come into your sales funnel awareness, where now they know you, you're not going to convert them in the short term. They're going to be long term leads. And that's true of the best salespeople on the planet. Those are just the numbers. And so you've got to have a way to nurture people. You can't talk to somebody one week and then five months later, do nothing and call them back. They're not going to remember, you know, the conversation. Maybe they don't even remember you. And so you've got to nurture. And nurturing is about providing valuable content through email to your community. And again, this is your, where you're providing content on issues that they care about. For Vistage uh, chairs, it's you know CEOs. What what do they care about? A toxic work environment. Certainly, uh, remote working. You know was and is huge. And you know corporate culture is a big deal. And uh, you know all these things and and many many more. And so you are providing content they care about centered around topics that are important to them video 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 so your email nurture is video content and this is you having a video content strategy i'll i'll, I'll mention that in a bit but uh that that is the mechanism to deliver content because again prospects clients they they want to watch a video as opposed to reading something and so we we use video for email nurture. It's the best practice. And in the email nurture, you always have calls to action, you know, for a complimentary, you know, uh, strategy session about your business. Click here, you know, goes to a landing page where they can see what you do and sign up or, you know, a complimentary you know, coaching session. I, you know, I've worked on that with clients. Uh, so you have a call to action in there, but the point is, Email nurture is about consistently sending email out and not selling all the time. Rule of thumb is market, 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 sell, market, 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 sell. You can't sell every single time, especially if people don't know you and they got to build up, you know, rapport with you. You just can't, can't be doing it that way. So there's an art to the whole email nurture, which involves copywriting, when you send it out, how frequently the nature of the content the mechanism like video, all that. So email nurture. So this is one of the things we're doing to engage uh, with, with the right prospects. Uh, content strategy, I mentioned video. This is the marketing of your business. Again, I mentioned Coca-Cola earlier. They're selling their marketing. We need to also. And marketing today for you and me, it's content. And the mistake I see a lot of people make is they're sharing other people's content and it does nothing for them, their brand, building them up as the authority. And they're going to say, OK, go read this article. Here's Inc. Magazine. Here's Forbes. Here's Richard Branson. That doesn't do anything to prop you up and position you. And so uh, what we're doing is video content strategy, educating, nurturing, touching hot prospects with this content they care about and it's original content it is filmed by the coaches by the chairs edited branded and it's going out and it's getting in front of the prospects it's not sending out content nobody sees it and so content strategy this is another way we're touching within our ecosystem these hot prospects and it's no longer a choice to do video anymore. Prospects and clients are demanding it. The stats are out there. You just can't argue it. And so if you're not doing video, you're behind the eight ball. So there's a video content strategy. It's not about doing Hollywood videos or time sucking, you know, endeavors. You're shooting video all day. That's not it. There's an efficient way to do it. But this is how we're doing it now. Number seven, LinkedIn group. LinkedIn groups, you know, there are a lot of opinions about LinkedIn groups out there. And um, I, you know, I just, I, I love what you can do with LinkedIn groups. And there's, you know, there's a lot of people selling and spamming in different groups, but what you do is you create your own group, make it private, and then you target your 
hot prospects to invite them to be in your group. And the content that you're sharing, the videos, the valuable content, and the alerts about the events you have coming up and so forth are posted to your group. And then whoever's in your group is getting notified that there's a post in the group. And so there's some autom automation built in by LinkedIn into the group scenario. And it's just, it's a way to, again, pull hot prospects into your ecosystem. And the way we use it is, uh, is it's a private group. So there's, uh, you know, there's a cachet about it. I wanna invite you to my private group. I'm building it up, hand selecting people. They come in and then you can start to collaborate, integrate with people in your group. When we do an event, uh, we will have an alert, a little video hyping the event that goes out to the group members. And so it's just another channel that uh, you can set up to pull these prospects into your ecosystem. I'm gonna dive in a bit here to virtual events because this is one of my favorite channels. I love this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna mention this because we're doing one couple days here with a Vistage chair and it's going great. Got about 50 people signed up. Um, here's, here's the deal with virtual events. We're all online today and people are zooming left, right and center. And you have an opportunity to build a authority, engage, with top prospects through the use of virtual events. And it's your show. So uh, I teach, okay, come up with your show, uh, brand your show, think of a TV show and, you know, you know what, do, what do, you know, TV shows and episodes do is they know their target audience, they brand around it, and there's consistency to it. They set expectations, they entertain, they educate. Thinking about Monday Night Football because my, former San Diego Chargers. I grew up there. Now the LA Chargers, you know, beat beat the Raiders last night. And uh, my Chargers hats around here somewhere. But uh, anyways, the NFL does it right. You know, they, they, you know, when it comes to sales, marketing, branding, their events, it's just, as we all know, well put together. So I always, you know, think about that when I'm watching football, but think about your show. And you put that together and it's a virtual virtual show. I've got Wealth Protector TV for uh, the law firm I'm building out, Giant TV for the media channel, and clients have various uh, branded um, uh, shows. So your virtual event is about teaching and educating. So it's high value content that again, your audience cares about, your audience, CEOs and C-suite executives. Now here's where it gets interesting and awesome. So virtual events is where you are doing a consistent event. I'd say at least once every 60 days and same day, same time. The only limit to the creativity with your show is the limit of your imagination. It can be about whatever you want. For the law firm, I'm the host of the show and I've got uh, lawyers on the show a lot, teaching and educating for the media company it's mostly just me and I've got clients that are doing different things and I'm going to show you an example of a show here in a minute but um, uh, what you do is uh, there are two ways to do it uh, LinkedIn live uh, pre-recorded and then a zoom let me get into the LinkedIn live pre-recorded virtual event so if you don't have LinkedIn live apply for it it's kind of you know in beta, not really, they've rolled it out, but not everybody can, you know, gets it right away. You got to apply for it. They don't just automatically uh, uh, give it to you, but Google it, apply to LinkedIn Live. You'll see the link come up and it'll just take a few minutes, get in there, get in line and you will get approved for it. Um, and it is an incredible, incredible tool to engage with prospects and build yourself up and dominate your niche there and here's how we are doing the linkedin lives and i'm going to talk about the event we have this week with the chair first of all you have your show and you're recording a zoom so let's say you've got somebody else on there and maybe you're interviewing that person you're having a discussion and you know that ceos care about this you're zooming that you're recording it okay so then we edit that video 
and it branded and uh, you know per uh, per the branding for the show. So now you have this this edited, clean, pre-recorded show, and, and and you're doing that you know anywhere from you know 20 to 45 minutes is is sort of the uh, the time frame, and now you take this pre-recorded video, and this is what you got to do for LinkedIn Live is you upload it to a third party streaming app it's required restream is is one of the most popular we love it i use it i'm an expert at restream so now you load this pre-recorded video up to restream when you do that restream automatically creates a linkedin event matter of fact they just upgraded this this process it creates a linkedin event we all have the LinkedIn event feature. If you look at your profile on the left-hand side, side pane, scroll down, you'll see events. You can create an event. Uh, so through this process, a LinkedIn event is set up. And uh, what is great about the LinkedIn event, it's an awesome, awesome feature. It, you know, LinkedIn put a microscope on it when the pandemic hit, made it online. It used to be sort of an offline thing, kind of wonky. Now it's on fire and they keep putting more and more attention on it. Uh, uh, but what happens is when you create this LinkedIn event, you can brand that interface, right? It's a different interface. You can have um, uh, logos, you can have banners on there, summaries, subject lines, but you create this event and now uh, you can invite your first level connections to this event. And I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, uh, but uh, you want to really embrace LinkedIn events. So now what happens for your virtual event is you now can stream this event where it's a live stream to your targeted audience that you've invited through the LinkedIn event feature, right? So. I'm going to talk about how to market it there, but you're streaming this, this live event and you're engaging with your top prospects as the event is streaming. You're there on your computer. So the event, the event streams and the way it works is it's very interesting. Your banner, your LinkedIn banner on your personal profile flips to the live show when when you set the the day and time it flips so anybody that's on your personal site your banner is going to be playing your live show it's awesome also the linkedin event portal is playing your live show the banner there flips your live show and that's where when you're inviting people they get directed to that portal and that's where they're watching the live show so that's how it streams live uh, for the event and you can engage and then you have a captive audience because when people join you know, your event and they express interest on LinkedIn, it pulls them into the event portal. You see them, you know who they are, it doesn't delete them, and you can follow up and engage, get into conversations and do all the things we do for events. So that's the LinkedIn Live pre-recorded. If you don't have LinkedIn Live, you're doing a, a Zoom event, be a live Zoom event, and you're running everything the same way, except for you don't have the third party app and you're not streaming live. Uh, you're inviting people to sign up via Zoom and watch it live on Zoom. So you obviously set up the Zoom, you set up the LinkedIn event, and you're gonna you know, market these in similar ways. But either way, this process works. LinkedIn Live is awesome, get it. If you don't have it, you still do this. Okay. Here's how you market this event. So you set the event up, it's branded, everything's ready to go. Now you've got email nurture going out. And remember, you've got your list on there. You've been nurturing them, cultivating that list, providing value, and they're your top prospects. And now you're nurturing them and you're making them aware of this event, inviting them, and you're directing them to uh, go sign up for the LinkedIn event. Sometimes we'll include a really killer landing page, direct them to a landing page where they sign up and they're being directed to go watch it on LinkedIn. And mind you, if you've got a Facebook company page, YouTube, 
you can stream to those too. When I do my live events, I'm streaming everywhere. Uh, but you've got email nurture going out, inviting people. You've got the LinkedIn event. So this is where you set up the event within that event portal. You can do it on your phone. You start inviting first level connections. And there are some filters on there. If you want a bulk invite, you can invite, um, you know, kind of 30 at a time, but you can go in there and buy it up to a thousand per week. And you just start inviting people. You probably have gotten the LinkedIn in, invites and you set it up right. You pull people in and you start inviting people uh, through the LinkedIn event feature. And it's only first level connections, but it's awesome. It's a great, great tool. You've got the dashboard nurture going on. So for events, this, this event will have a nurture campaign going out automated from the dashboard to first level connections, right? So you've got a bunch of first level connections in LinkedIn. How are you communicating and nurturing with, with that community? Most people, they just sit there and maybe you talk to one or two here or there, you know, but the more you build up a community, you're not talking to these people all the time, but you got to nurture them. I mean, this is otherwise it's just a dead community. So through the dashboard, and again, I don't know how you, how you do it, but on your end, but uh, we've got automation going out, direct messages to first level connections, inviting them to this event with the link to the event. So that, so we're marketing it that way too. Then there's strategic tagging. I always mention this because when you send out content and maybe you send out a, a piece of content about uh, the event coming up, you got to strategically tag your prospects. And methodically, uh, I will do it and teach people I'm working with, is going every time that you put together a great piece of content, especially if it's video and you're doing that, tag four or five top prospects in the summary of the content they'll get notified they'll get alerted human nature takes over they'll go check it out but it's a way to strategically get a great piece of content into exactly the people you want to see it uh and uh, it's one way to to make sure your content is getting reach uh so that's how you're marketing the results of doing this your uh awareness of your prospects uh, about you and your geographic area. So remember, my whole mindset is Vistage chairs got to just dominate their geographic area. You know, they got to be just all roads lead to Rome. Everything leads to them, you know, uh, as, as people are networking in the area and on LinkedIn, off LinkedIn. So it creates awareness of you, saturating. And also it, uh, the results of this process create constant engagement by you with prospects, constant, consistent. You're just front and center nonstop. As I mentioned earlier, you position yourself as the authority in what you're doing. A lot of competition. Example, okay, event coming up uh, October 7th in two days, Vistage Chair. Awesome event, awesome event. So executives are focused on sales, right? I mean, I think a lot of people had slower sales. Now it's ramping up, maybe not, but uh, this chair got an incredible guest on the show, Manny, and they're talking about sales. Manny's an expert. Uh, I know Manny, he's incredible. And uh, we all put this show together, marketed it just as I ex explained. And you can see here, this was yesterday, got 45 attendees. And these are people that have expressed interest. We will take that all day long. And it's an online event. And uh, this chair uh, has LinkedIn Live. And so it's just awesome. We know who these people are. You know, not everyone's going to show up. People are going to do what people do. But we know who they are. Here they are. And we've collected email addresses. So we're nurturing there. Uh, and we're touching them in all those places I mentioned. This is incredible. This is this is the way it is. And what we'll do is, I have another slide here. I don't, but this is just a process you repeat over and over and over. This isn't a massive endeavor, like two months, you know, a month to make this happen. You get these pieces together, then it's just a well-oiled machine. We'll do another one in 60 days and another one in 60 days and another one in 60 days. There never is a lack of 
you know, if you have guest speakers, I mean, there, there's, you know, top uh, Vistage speakers are happy to do this. As a matter of fact, I have another event at the end of October with another chair with a number one Vistage speaker. And we're putting that event together. It's going to be awesome. And, um, and so having content is not an issue. It's this process and making sure these pieces are all dialed in together and it's just going. The results are awesome. And so uh, I would say that uh, if you're a chair, business coach, uh, jump on this. Always happy to talk to anybody who watches, takes the time to watch these shows. You know, you dial me up here. You know, uh, you're, we're, you're on LinkedIn. Um, although I'm streaming this in other places, but where, wherever you, you're seeing this, reach out to me. Happy to chat with you. Love to learn about your business, what's working, what's not working. I can go into any details, anything you see here, and always appreciate your time. Thanks so much for being here.